In probability, we want to be able to answer any probability question, like what is the probability of X, some event happening? What we want is to ask the question X to a magic probability box that will output the probability of that event. For instance, we might want to ask what is the probability a person is less than 65 inches tall or more than 72 inches tall? So we'd want to put these numbers into some function and get out a probability. We want a way to measure the probability of being in any range, which may be a complicated set of intervals, like the interval from negative infinity to 65 combined with the interval from 72 to infinity. We are going to learn that probability is sort of like weight or mass. Do we have a function like the magic probability box for weight or mass? Uh, a function that inputs an object x and outputs its weight? Well, we do. We, we call that a scale. And we'll see that for certain random quantities, called discrete random variables, we do have a scale called a probability mass function. However, even in the case of weighing objects, a scale can't measure the weight of everything easily. For instance, if I wanted to measure the weight of my lungs, I could not do that with a scale. My lungs are inside my body, and I would have to cut them out to put them on a scale, which would be bad. And just like there are too many complicated body parts, there are too many complicated probability questions. What is the probability a person is less than 65 inches tall or more than 72 inches tall? I cannot answer that question as simply as I would like. There are so many questions that we can't easily understand a function like the magic probability box. But maybe we can ask a simpler question. What is the probability that x is equal to one specific value? And it is possible to answer a question like this if the random variable is discrete. So an example of a discrete random variable is something like the number of heads in five coin flips. This can be zero, one, two, three, four, or five, but it cannot be a decimal number like 0.14373. There are gaps in the possible outcomes, and this is what it means to be discrete. And because there are gaps, it is very easy to tell the probability of individual events. We can see here in a graph the probability of each possible outcome when I flip five coins. And because there are gaps in this distribution, it is easy to see the probability of each. So let's learn about discrete random variables and their relationship to mass. So imagine a one pound rock. We can break it into six pieces and each piece would weigh one sixth of a pound. Here's a graph of the six parts of the rock and the mass of each, which is one sixth of a pound. Similarly, probability is like mass. We can distribute one unit of probability, the 100% of things that will happen, among the six events, and each event would get one-sixth probability. This describes rolling a die. Each outcome, one through six, has a probability of one-sixth. We could write this as a probability mass function, describing the probability of each outcome as one-sixth. Or we could write it slightly differently. Uh, this is the same function expressed in a more compact form. These are called probability mass functions. Mass is like probability. So a probability mass function inputs a single outcome and outputs its probability. For instance, I could input the die roll 5 and output the probability of rolling a 5, 1 out of 6. Now let's learn about continuous random variables and their relationship to mass. A continuous random variable is something like height that can take decimal values, 66, 67, or any number in between. So imagine a rock. This rock has mass, and this part of the rock has mass, and these even smaller parts of the rock have mass. But does an infinitely small part of the rock have mass? No, one point does not have any mass. A zero-dimensional point has no volume, so it cannot have any mass. And this is similar to how continuous random variables work. So let's look at height. There are many people between 66 and 70 inches tall. There are even many people between 66 and 67 inches tall. But is there anyone in the world who is exactly 66 inches tall? And by that, I mean 66.0000 going on forever down to infinitely many decimal places. No, there is not anybody who is that tall. 
zero-dimensional points of a rock have no mass, and likewise, exact outcomes in continuous distributions have probability zero. That doesn't mean that it can't happen, it just means that it's exceedingly unlikely. And that's why we don't have PMFs for continuous random variables. Probability, or mass, is zero everywhere. Now let's go back to rocks. If each point of the rock doesn't have mass, how do we find the mass of a section without cutting the rock apart? It would help if we knew the density of the rock. So suppose the rock has a density of one pound per cubic foot. Then if the volume is one cubic foot, the mass is one pound. If the volume is two cubic feet, then the mass is two pounds. Mass is equal to the density times the volume. And in physics, only three-dimensional objects have volume, so only three-dimensional objects have mass. In probability, and in the mathematical field of measure theory, which probability is based on, volume is a little more general. It includes things like length, which is one-dimensional volume, area, two-dimensional volume, and even higher-dimensional volumes. Probability is equal to density times volume. Probability is like mass. So let's look at a probability example. Suppose bus arrival times are uniformly distributed between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Not a very good bus. The probability the bus arrives at any one exact time, like 8 to 10, on the dot, down to infinitely many decimal points, is zero. There's no area, there's no volume, there's no mass, there's no probability. But there is a probability density, 1 60th per minute. Remember that mass is volume times density, and mass here is probability. The volume is the length of an interval, it's the one-dimensional volume, and we can rearrange this equation. And we know that the probability of the bus arriving in this interval in general is 1, so the probability of the whole interval is 1, and thus the density is 1 over the length of the interval. And here our interval is 60 minutes long, so our density is 1 over 60. So if I asked you a question like what is the probability of arriving in an interval between 8.10 and 8.34, well we would simply find the probability by taking the density times the length. And the density is 1 out of 60, and the length of that interval is 24. So the probability is 24 out of 60, or 40%. There's a 40% probability of arriving in this interval. Now these problems were relatively simple. The rock had constant density throughout the rock. And similarly, the bus arrival times had constant probability density throughout the hour. But mass doesn't have to be uniform throughout the object, and probability doesn't have to be uniform throughout the sample space of possible outcomes. What if the rock had different densities throughout? This rock has two different densities, and the mass is equal to the mass of the red part plus the mass of the blue part. And the mass of the red part is the volume of the red part times its density, and the mass of the blue part is the volume of it times its density. If density varies, we calculate the mass of each section separately, then add them together. We could have a rock with many different colors throughout, many different densities. How would we find the mass of this rock? Well, the mass of this rock is just the sum of the mass of each section, each different colored section. And the mass of each section is the volume of that section times the density of that section. And we add them all together. But what if the density is changing continuously throughout the rock. If our rock looks like this, we can't just break it into sections that have the same density. How can we find the mass of this rock? Well, if we could break it into really, really small sections, they would almost have the same density. And we could add up the density of each section of the rock. But there are infinitely many colors because this is working in a continuous gradient. So we are adding infinitely many things. Adding infinitely many things is integrating. So what we're really doing is integrating the density over the entire volume, which we can write as the integral of f of x, the density at each point, times dx, which are small volumes. Continuous probability distributions work the same way. We integrate the probability density over the volume whose probability mass we want to find. So the probability, or the probability mass, 
is just the integral of the probability density f of x over the area of which we want to find the probability. So the normal distribution is described by a probability density function. And the function is relatively complicated, but at least we can write it down, unlike the magic probability box, which we can't write down. So this probability density function describes a normal distribution. And we integrate this function to find the probability of various events. So if I want to find what is the probability of a person being less than 65 inches tall or more than 72 inches tall, I simply integrate this function over this area, which we can see in this picture, the area under the curve. And this is generally how we find probabilities in continuous distributions. We can't just input the numbers 65 and 72 into a simple function, but we can find the density and then integrate it over the area of interest. And just like if I know the probability density function, I can find any probability. If I knew the density function of my body, I could integrate it to find the weight of my lungs. Measure theory is this field of mathematics that unites these measures, mass, density, and probability. It studies length, area, volume, probability, and the connection between these different ways to measure things. Density and mass functions are, in some sense, derivatives of complex functions that describe the relationships between different types of measures. For instance, the relationship between length and probability. So we want to understand this magic probability box, but it's hard to understand because we can't just write down an equation. But we can understand the derivative of it, which is this probability density function. And this is called the radon nicotine derivative, which we know as the probability density function. And it's a more manageable function than the complicated function, the magic probability box. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.